Hey everybody, Sam from the Eventbrite Boost team here. I hope you're having yourselves a fantastic day. And in today's video, we're gonna be walking you through the process of how to create your first Facebook and Instagram ad campaign via the Eventbrite Boost platform. So to go ahead and get started, you're first gonna to want to jump to the marketing tab up in the top left, and then let's go ahead and navigate over to the ad campaign section. And this is where we are going to be launching our first campaign. So to go ahead and get started, let's scroll down towards the bottom and we will simply want to use this drop down to select the event that we would like to advertise. Now we've built a really awesome automated system that's going to help handle a lot of things on the back end for you, such as what objective should I run, many things for your targeting as well. So it should be very simple for us to get started. Simply use the drop down to select the event you'd like to promote and based on how your customers normally purchase and all the research that we've done, we'll actually suggest an objective that you should run based on where your event is in its life cycle. So let's go ahead and hit the blue button to get started creating our ad campaign here. The first step of creating your campaign is to simply choose what is the objective that we would like to run and where do we want to send people with the campaign that we are running. Now, if you had chosen your event right event via the drop down we just looked at, we're automatically suggesting the best objective that we think you should run. But for a little bit of context, if you're in a period where your customers have urgency to buy, this ad that sends people straight to your eventbrite.com ticketing pages or one of your websites is a very good option. If you are in a period where your customers might not be that likely to purchase, but we want to grow our remarketing audiences to help market to them later down the road, we might recommend something like a Facebook event RSVP campaign. We also have the engagement style ads, but normally the, pro the best bang for your buck is going to be one of the first two options here. And then once we have chosen that objective, you might not need to change anything here, but if you wanted to direct to a different link or choose the event that you wanted to send people to, very easy to do so in this section. And you can always check where your ad is, is going by checking this link down towards the bottom. So once we hit the continue button, simply we are going to be choosing what is the ad account that we would like to run our campaign with here. So you can use this drop down to go ahead and choose the ad account that you would like to run your campaign from. And then you'll use the next drop down to choose what's the Facebook page and Instagram account we would like our ad to be running from as well. And if you happen to have multiple Facebook pixels, you can choose which one you want installed on your ticketing pages. If you don't know what a Facebook pixel is, don't worry as we handle all of this automatically for you. It's going to aid you in remarketing to people that visit your website and then also aid you from a tracking perspective. So let's hit continue to jump to the next step. We are automatically going to pull in the location of your event as well. My event here was located in the United States. So if you leave the box blank, it will target the entire US by default. But let's say we wanted to target Los Angeles here. Very easy for us to either type out our location or select one of the locations. And then down towards the bottom, we are simply choosing what is the lower bound for the age range that we would like to target with our campaign. So if my event was 21 and up, I would simply choose 21 and up and click continue to the next step. In this section, we are going to be defining who do we want to target with our ad campaign. So the first box that we are going to be configuring here is simply something called an interest, demographic, or behavior audience. If you've built an ad campaign on Facebook before, this is probably what you've already worked with. It's an audience that helps us go after brand new people that might be interested in your event. And we'll go ahead and start out by typing in some words related to our event. So let's pretend I was advertising a yoga related event here. I might go ahead and type out something like yoga and kind of get a feel for what can I even target on Facebook. You can't target everything. So generally in this section, you'll just want to type out a couple different interests here in this section to effectively see what we could target. So I might go ahead and type out something like yoga, meditation, and once you've actually entered in a couple different interests, you can use the drop down by clicking on the space towards the right to actually get some other suggestions from Facebook on similar things that we could effectively target. So I might go ahead and use this drop down, kind of look through a couple different things in here that I feel are relevant or people that maybe are interested in these topics might want to attend my event. There is no right or wrong answer for the number of interests that you have, but you'll just want to be conscious of how many people are actually in that audience. Let's say we had a bunch of interests in here, but there were only you know, 100 people in these interest groups. That might be too small given your area. You generally want to shoot to try to have, you know, maybe around 50 to 100,000 people in here. And maybe a good number of interests to have in this section might be anywhere between maybe um, maybe five to 10 interests here in this section. So once we've gone ahead and entered in a couple different interests, you always could use these plus buttons to add extra ones, but it's just going to add in the next five interests that we see here in this section. So I personally actually like to use this drop down to go ahead and choose them myself rather than hit plus 20 and have to get rid of a bunch of them. 
But additionally, if you are a music or comedy related event, you would want to use this generate interest from Spotify button where we can simply tar t uh, basically type out any artist on Spotify or any comedian and we'll actually automate the process of building an interest audience for you based on similar and related artists to anyone that you enter. So a nice shortcut if you are running a music or comedy related event. And up towards the top, additionally, we have this really awesome feature in Eventbrite Boost called Smart Audiences. This is a way that you can tap into Eventbrite's network and scale to help you market to individuals that have purchased other similar Eventbrite events in your area and also target other individuals that are similar to those. So if you've ever heard the term lookalike in Facebook, it's basically an audience that you can use to go after similar people that might have interacted with you on Facebook or purchased from you in the past. These are our own version of lookalike audiences that allow you to target other individuals that have bought for similar Eventbrite events. And these audiences generally perform really well and accomplish the same purpose as these interest audiences helping you go after new people. So if we wanted to add in that smart audience for a little bit of A-B testing, so we're not putting all of our eggs in one basket, simply check this box and we'll go ahead and generate that audience for you automatically. And down towards the bottom, another unique feature of Eventbrite Boost is we automatically include a remarketing audience for your campaign. This is something fairly difficult to do if you're building your campaign in Facebook. You normally have to build this audience in a separate section. We're building this audience alongside your campaign as you go. If you don't do anything here in this section, we're automatically going to be remarketing to people that interact with you on Facebook and your Facebook events, which is why it's important to use that add to Facebook feature to publish and make Facebook events for all of your event right events so you can remarket to the people that interact with them but additionally if you happen to have an Instagram account here in the section that you want to remarket to people that interact with you on Instagram and a Facebook pixel as well very easy to select that in this section and we'll give you kind of an approximate reach of how many people might you be reaching with your campaign down towards the bottom and effectively, once we've configured all this, if you are an advanced Facebook Ads Manager user or an Ad Pro and want to have more control over what you're doing, you could always switch to the advanced targeting. But in most cases, you can probably just roll with the initial targeting we had here. Click Continue, and then we are all set with the hardest part of your campaign. Now, in this section, we are simply choosing what's the schedule for where we want our ad to be running. We just want to be conscious that, you know, we're, we're conserving a good amount of budget to actually advertise to our customers when they're likely to purchase. If we were really far out from our event and we didn't think that a lot of people were going to purchase, we just want to make sure that maybe we're running the ad for a short period of time and not spending a lot of money so we can reserve that budget to actually run campaigns when our customers are likely to purchase or register. So we can go ahead and set our start and end date. And if we need to change up the time, simply click over here on the right. We can change the time and then click OK, and that will save our time change. Now, the next step is defining what's the budget that we want to spend on our ad campaign. The way budgets work with Facebook is normally for around every $10 that you spend, you'll probably reach on average maybe around 800 to 2,000 people given the audiences that you're targeting. And normally the more people you end up reaching with your campaign, the more data Facebook has to figure out what's working, what's not working, and how can we optimize the performance. So if you ever enter in a really small budget, we'll give you a warning if you're not meeting the recommended or minimum budget given by Facebook. But as a good rule of thumb, you might want to spend anywhere between you know, 5 to $10 a day that might be a good daily spend. It's always okay to spend more than that, but we'll always warn you if you're, you're not hitting that bare minimum budget, and you can always swap between total or daily spend here in this section. Doesn't make a difference on performance. It ultimately boils down to what's gonna make the most sense for you figuring out how much you're actually spending on your ad. I would recommend total if your budget is fixed, or daily spend if you're trying to fluctuate that budget on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's go ahead and enter in a total budget here in this section. Now within this section, we are simply um, creating the ad design for what our creative is going to look like. We're automatically going to pull in the image associated with your event right event or your Facebook event. So you might not need to change or upload anything else in this section, but if you wanted to add in a different image or video or an additional image or video to do a little bit of A-B testing, very easy for you to select it here in this section. And we can simply click add selected asset after we've chosen the one we want or uploaded a new image or video and go ahead and add that in. So you can actually see here now I have two different versions of my images that I'm using. We've built this platform out in a way that makes it very accessible for you to A-B test your creatives. And what our system will do is it'll automatically optimize to show whatever ad is actually performing better.
Now, A-B testing in theory sounds like a good thing, but you don't want to go overboard with it, as if you add in a lot of variations, it's actually going to impact the way Facebook optimizes your campaign. So if there's any takeaway I could give you, the most important thing to A-B test might be maybe add in two images or one image, one video. Don't really worry too much about A-B testing the different text components. Now the post text is what shows up above your ad. We will automatically generate a little bit of copy for you, but please feel free to delete it. Write your own copy here that has a sense of urgency, gives people context about what's going on, as generally you always want to bring your own flavor or personality into it, as it's a better way to connect with people that would be attending your events. Um, but feel free to change up the boilerplate copy too if you want to roll with that. The link headline is normally what shows up kind of next to that call to action button. Generally, you're entering in like the title of your event or giving a little bit more context. Uh, the link description doesn't show up on every network placement, but it generally aims to describe why might somebody be clicking on that call to action button, normally saying something like get your tickets on Eventbrite or click here to RSVP. If you're, you're running something like that, normally it doesn't show up in those type of ads, but generally you're just describing why would somebody be clicking on this ad. It's the, the least important component of your ad entirely. And the last section is the call to action. This is gonna be the button that shows up on that right hand side of your ad here. If you are selling a paid event, we would normally recommend just go ahead and use that buy tickets button, by far the best one that you could use. But if you are throwing a free event, maybe using something like learn more or potentially something like sign up, that would be another good option for you to use. Um, if you want to see the variations or the different previews on these different network placements, simply click on the, the image or video that you'd want to see the variation of, and you can click on the previews here on the right-hand side for the different network placements. And additionally, if you happen to have an image or video that was specific for one network placement, you can always click on this pen icon that we have here and either change up the crop or the image or change up the video or the thumbnail on a per per placement basis, if you happen to have a really nice vertical uh, asset for your Instagram placements here. And that y'all is simply the last step of creating your ad campaign. If you're not ready to go ahead and get it launched right away, you'd wanna scroll up to the top and make sure that you save that campaign as a draft so you can go back. You can always click through the various steps on the left-hand side to revisit it, so you don't have to go step by step here. And then simply in the last step, if we were ready to go ahead and get launched, we'll simply have a page where we review everything that we've created here, um, our budget, how long our ad campaign is going to be running, and then we are all set to actually launch that ad campaign. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped give you a little bit of context as you went ahead and built your first campaign. Uh, we appreciate you giving the platform a shot and trying everything out here, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Uh, my name has been Sam. Thank you very much for watching, and take care, everybody.